So if you've been looking at author websites, you've probably heard WordPress recommended before. A lot of people recommend using WordPress as your content management system. However, it's a little bit tricky and confusing because WordPress, on the one hand, is kind of the, it's not exactly software, but it's kind of like a software that you install on your hosting that you can put all of your content on, your, your articles, your design, the theme, and everything. WordPress also has its own website, which is wordpress.org, where they give you free or um, higher price paid options for web hosting. They're not the same. If you go to wordpress.org and you buy a site from them, they have total control over everything and there's a lot of limitations with what you're able to do. So if you sign up for free hosting at, at wordpress.org, they'll give you something like um, maybe Derek Murphy at wordpress.org, which is okay, but because it's free, there's gonna be advertisements and they're gonna only show you a few themes. And if you're building a website on their platform, they're even more careful with what you're allowed to do because they don't want you to upload anything that destroys their platform. So they allow, they don't allow you to kind of upload and build your own website. You only can choose the themes that they offer, the plugins that they offer. So there's a lot of limitations and you can't really build what you want on the wordpress.org site. Um, even if you pay for a more professional version where you get your own domain, maybe DerekMurphy.com, you're still going to be on wordpress.org's larger system and they limit what you can do. And so that's not what you want. What you want to do is buy your own domain and buy your own hosting. And I'll put some links down below. I use GoDaddy a lot. People also talk about Bluehost. There's a lot of different web hosting services and most of them cost five or $10 a month. So it's some money. It's, you know, it might cost you $100 a year for an author website. Um, if you really can't afford it, then you can find something cheaper. Even there's some websites that are like some hosting that's like two or $3 a month for something basic and simple. Um, and there's a lot of free WordPress themes. So I'll show you later, we'll get into kind of the nuts and bolts and I'll, I'll walk you through installing a WordPress theme. But you, what you want to do is sign up for hosting. And then once you have your hosting, you install WordPress. WordPress is a free content management system. Once you get hosting on any platform, on Bluehost or GoDaddy, they all have a WordPress option. And a lot of them have managed WordPress settings. So instead of buying regular hosting, which is kind of just like an empty box, you can buy managed WordPress, which is a little bit structured. And I recommend it because with managed WordPress, WordPress has to be updated frequently or else it's vulnerable to hacks. And so they're always putting out new versions of, of WordPress and updates to all the plugins and the themes. And you need to be logging in pretty regularly and updating all of your content or else you may um, get a, some kind of malicious code or an attack that makes your website act funny. And that's not what you want. If you get a managed WordPress hosting, it might be a little bit more money, but usually not. Um, somebody will make most of those updates for you. And that'll just help you clean, keep it a little bit cleaner. It's not a big deal, but it, it's worth a little bit of extra money to not have to worry about those updates and have somebody to take care of those updates for you. You do get a little bit of limitation. There's some, some uh, plugins and themes that may not work with the managed WordPress setting because they need to be pretty careful about what they allow. There's some plugins that interfere with the way that their managed WordPress is set up. But for a lot of sites, I use GoDaddy's managed WordPress on a lot of my sites because it's simple and clean and it keeps things going pretty well. I also use more of a regular hosting where I can build more advanced things that I want that need more flexibility and freedom. Um, but for most people, for starting out with an author website, just get a basic WordPress hosting or a WordPress managed hosting, not on WordPress.org, but on an actual hosting site. There's also some um, more expensive managed WordPress hosting that costs maybe 20 or $30 a month, um, but it's safer and cleaner and probably faster. You're not gonna need it. In the beginning, you're not gonna be getting much traffic, but eventually, or if you're selling a lot of books already and now you want an author platform, it might be worthwhile to think about how many visits you're getting uh, per month or how many 
pictures or how much content you have, probably you're going to make something pretty simple and minimal that's going to showcase your books and your writing and your articles. You're not going to need anything complex. Usually the cheapest available hosting is going to be enough for your author WordPress site. Um, and it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Mainly you're just going to spend, the next video I'm going to talk more about the money, but mainly you're just going to spend some on the hosting and then a WordPress theme and maybe some advanced plugins. Um, and then also your mailing list, which might be something extra depending on what mailing list you sign up for.